Hi, Peter Johns here, emergency physician and vertigo enthusiast. This video I'm entitling History Taking Tips in Vertigo, or should you ask them, what do you mean by dizzy? Many clinicians find taking a history from a patient with dizziness or vertigo very challenging, and admittedly it can be. We were taught in the past that the way to discover the cause of a patient's dizziness was to ask the patient to describe the sensation that they are feeling. That is, ask them, what do you mean by dizzy? That initial approach to vertigo has often been ascribed to this 1972 paper. And this may be true, because on the second page of this paper, we find the categories that we were taught to separate dizziness into. That is, ask them what do you mean by dizzy? And if the answer is a spinning sensation, then they have vertigo. If they say they're lightheaded, then they have presyncope, probably cardiac. If they say they're unbalanced, then they have a neurologic problem. And if they can't describe it, they probably have a psychiatric problem. David Newman Toker published a paper in 2007 that studied patients presenting to an emergency department where dizziness was at least a part of the reason they came to the ED. When patients were asked to pick a description that described the dizzy sensation, more than half the time they chose more than one description or changed to another description when asked again six minutes later. This study only had a couple of dozen patients in whom dizziness was the main reason for their visit to the ED, but I've certainly found that patients' descriptions of their dizziness is unreliable. This is the same as with chest pain. When I see someone with chest pain and ask, what does your pain feel like? If they answer burning, I don't just hand them a PPI and send them home. Or if they say it's heaviness, I don't send them straight to the cath lab. But I still ask my patients what their dizziness feels like. I just don't rely on their answer. I recently saw a patient presenting with constant severe dizziness, which was made worse with head movement, and spontaneous vertical nystagmus, who was having a significant cerebellar stroke. When I asked him what his dizziness was like, he made a circular movement with his finger saying, whew, whew. I said, so spinning? He said, more like lightheadedness. I didn't press him any further as his spontaneous vertical nystagmus and other physical findings made it clear he was having a cerebellar stroke. Listen to what this woman says her dizziness is like. And what, what did that wobbliness feel like or that dizziness feel like? Kind of shaky. Yeah? yeah. What else? Did you feel like you were spinning or the world was spinning? Not really. Or was it, no, or was it more no, like no. you're going to faint? That would be more like Okay. So she felt like she was going to faint. So let's order ECG, troponins, maybe an outpatient Holter, echo, and follow up with cardiology. But this is her during positional testing. And eyes nice and big. Everything's starting to move. It is, yeah. Uh, which is a more, this is a little bit stronger, eh? Yeah, it's really yeah. moving. Okay. That curtain's twisting right now. Yeah, it sure is. Now, if you think her nystagmus indicates a positive dix pike test and that she was then cured with the epi maneuver, think again. A positive dix pike test is where you see vertical upward and rotary nystagmus towards the downward ear. In fact, her dix pike test showed horizontal nystagmus, which is not diagnostic for regular BPBV, that is posterior canal BPBV. Horizontal nystagmus during the Dix-Hallpike test is suggestive of horizontal canal BPBV. So she then had the supine roll test performed on her to diagnose her apogeotropic horizontal canal BPBV. The video just showed was her supine roll test and she was then cured of her horizontal canal BPBV with the Gafani maneuver. To learn more about this form of BPBV, which may affect 30 to 40% of the patients you're seeing with BPBV, click on the link on your screen. So how did I know she likely was suffering from BPBV? It certainly wasn't by asking her, what do you mean by dizzy? In fact, I didn't bother asking her what her dizziness felt like until much later in the history. Here is the earlier part of the history where the most likely diagnosis becomes BPBV. So just tell me what brought you here again. Well, I woke up this morning and I turned over to get out of bed and everything just went stars and 
and the stomach didn't feel good, and I, so I laid back down again. When you laid back down, what happened? Ooh. I think it sort of settled a little, and I stayed for a while, and I thought I'd get again, and it wasn't, it wasn't good. Okay. When you laid back down again, did the dizziness go away? I think some, yes. How long did it take for it to go away? Oh, gee, I don't know. No idea. Was it a second, 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, an no, hour? probably less than that. Probably yeah. lower. Lower, so um, like just a, a guess. Maybe half a minute or so. Half a minute or so, okay. So by asking her what she was doing when she got dizzy, and how long it lasted, and if it got better when she stayed still, I was able to get a history consistent with the clinical features of BPBV. Also, when I examined her, she did not have any spontaneous or gaze-evoked nystagmus. Spontaneous nystagmus means when you're looking straight ahead, and gaze-evoked nystagmus when you have them look off 30 degrees or so to one side, and then to the other. Patients with BPBV don't have nystagmus except during positional testing, such as during the Dix-Hall-Pike test. So the answer to the question, should you ask patients what do you mean by dizzy, is sure, you can ask them, but it should be the first question you ask, and you shouldn't rely on the answer to create your differential diagnosis. Instead, ask what were they doing when the dizziness started, how long the intense dizzy episode lasted, and if it pretty much resolved when they stayed still. These questions will help you sort out your dizzy patients much better than asking, what do you mean by dizzy? You can see more details on history taking in Vertigo and how to perform bedside testing in my Big 3 of Vertigo video. The link is on your screen. If clinicians have questions, feel free to ask me in the comments section or on Twitter at PeterJohns84. And make sure you see my other videos on my YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.